Hey guys, Jason Shellcross of the Fantasy Football Sacco is back again with another episode. Today, Alex and I are going to be talking about our Sacco Steals of the Draft. These are guys that we think you should be targeting in your mid to late rounds. Some, some really good draft value to be had here. Uh, potential sleepers, really high upside guys. They're the players that we're going to be targeting ourselves and fighting each other for this draft season. So with that, let's go. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do what you got to do, YouTube world. Uh, for everybody else, follow us on social media at the FF Sackos and go ahead and check out our website, the fantasy football sackos.com for everything you need fantasy football this season. Let's go. Welcome to the fantasy football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! How are we doing, everybody? Fantasy Football Sackos back again, episode 14. I love all this uh, two per week action. We've been on a roll this last month. Uh, Alex uh, is in the studio, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Channeling Let's his, call it that. Alex is channeling his inner Woody Page this week. <laughs> With the, yeah, just hanging hanging out. Uh, my kids do in ten days, so I'm I'm breaking in the crib room. Uh, we have this sweet sign in background that says "Welcome to my crib" with a bunch of highlighted or painted triangle colors. So just figured I'd come in here. Did you paint that out. room? Uh, my wife painted most of it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That woman is a saint. That <laughs> looks like it took hours. Yeah, it was a long time, but it was one of our quarantine projects. Uh, so yes, it, I know yeah, those. It, it took up a lot of time. I, I know those very well, my friend. Very well. <laughs> um, speaking right, of... It's like my, me and my wife made a baby. You and me are making a podcast baby. <laughs> different kind of nurturing involved or the same yeah i mean it's a little bit different than you'd expect but uh, it, it I don't know. can be equally messy at times <laughs> i guess so <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh the the fortunes of this podcast uh speaking of just, which you just never know what's gonna happen really you know you don't i never know what's gonna happen in these intros if i'm being completely honest um Man, so we we actually speaking of this podcast and and, and things, my uh, my lovely fiance felt the need to go get an air fryer. That's a good that's a good idea. Air fryers <laughs> are the best. <laughs> so we had we had air fried uh, parmesan like fried zucchini, and we are having the famous Alex Krog Alex Krog air fried chicken wings this weekend as well i believe that's tomorrow's Dude. dinner so. yeah man my wife made those last weekend they were so good with the parm garlic mm. from b-dubs it was so salty and delicious oh Excellent. if you don't have an air fryer you need to get an air fryer <laughs> i still don't know how they work but you know that's neither here nor there with air <laughs> with air oh my goodness um did you uh so so today we are going to be talking about our Sacco draft sleepers, Sacco draft targets, the Sacco steals. We, we got to figure out what we're going to call this segment here. But these are guys that Alex and I have come to agreement on being a mid to late round value. And we're going to discuss four players uh, today. Um and when we say mid round, mid to late round value, that is comparing our rankings, which are available on our website, uh, which is scrolling across the bottom of the screen on YouTube. And for everybody listening, it is the fantasy football um, You can go to our top 125 rankings page. You'll see our consensus rankings. And this is top 125 overall uh, for half PPR. And you'll see our consensus rankings, my rankings alone, Alex's rankings alone. And then 
are consensus players compared to where ESPN has them ranked in their top 300 overall, which is PPR. So it's a little different, you know, scoring, but nonetheless, um, that's the, you know, top 300 cheat sheets that they put out every year. And then there's this nice little fancy column over all the way at the end called value. And we have numbered and color coded how far apart our consensus ranking is from the ESPN consensus ranking. So you can see guys who we are higher on are colored in various shades of green, depending on how much higher we're on than ESPN. And then guys in red are people that we feel like ESPN has ranked potentially too high and that we would probably you know, not get in an ESPN draft. Um, and then we're also going to talk about some ADPs. We're toying with the idea about putting up their ADPs on that site as well. So we can talk about, you know, our top 125 compared to where they're actually being drafted, but the ADPs shift on a day to day hour to hour basis. So you don't have time I to keep up with all that. <laughs> no, I like we have full time <laughs> jobs. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm not. Yeah. So that would that if we did it, it would be like a one time thing that we put them in and it would be as of a, a certain date. And honestly, we would probably wait until September to put that in because that's when most drafts are anyway. So anyways, speaking of which, speaking of yes, all of our Go ahead. I, I, was, I was just going to hop in real quick. I, so we kind of picked these four guys. It turns out that we, during our mock draft episode, um, what, a week ago or whatever it was, we actually ended up with three of these four guys on our teams. Yeah. Um, which I guess is not overly surprising, but it just happened to work out that way. So we're, we're considerably higher on all, all of these guys. I personally doing the research on all four of them want all of them on my team this year, especially in the there mid rounds go. where, where their current ADPs are going because I, I feel like they have a pretty good upside. So it's not even like a sleeper episode. It's more just a straight up value episode where we're just highlighting four guys. We haven't really talked about yet that we're high on. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully it's relatively informational. Yeah, I mean, I, all the podcasts and I mean, just fantasy football in general, everybody spends so much time talking about like the top 24 at running back and wide receiver top 12 tight ends. I mean, in tight ends, it makes sense because that's there should only be like 12 to maybe 14 tight ends that get drafted in a 12 team league uh, unless you're, you know, super flex or something crazy. Um, but Nobody really that that is so shallow in terms of how many rounds that actually covers like 24 running backs, 24 wide receivers. That's 48. OK, that's four rounds plus 12 tight ends. I mean, they're not 12 tight ends aren't going to go in the first five rounds. You get maybe two, three to four in the first five rounds and sprinkle in like three quarterbacks like so people most podcasts only really focus on the first like four to five rounds worth of players. And so everybody's kind of high and dry like who do I target in the mid to later rounds? Well, welcome. We're going to talk about some guys that we like. Yeah. And so we're, we're starting out with the guys we like, you know, in a couple episodes, we're definitely going to be talking about the people that we're not quite as high on. Um, and there's like, we've already yeah. highlighted some like Aaron Jones and different things like that, but there are still some, some middle round guys that it's like, there's no reason why they should be going as high as they are. So looking forward to talking about that, but we're kind of starting out on the positive side of, Hey, yes. we like these guys. So we're going to be happy today. Let's Maybe. Start Although out I'm never with... really that happy. Honestly, I'm happy that you're in a, big, bright, colorful room, your big, bright, colorful crib. Um, my goodness, this, this is great. Everybody should go to YouTube and just see the Woody page ask moment we're having. Now let's get into player one. Um, our number one mid to late round target value sleeper is Brandon cooks. Alex and I have him at consensus overall 60 uh, ESPN has him ranked 95th overall. So three rounds later, uh, his ADP. Thank you. Beautiful, lovely drafters who are, you know, doing their research and doing mocks in July. His current ADP is 69 and a half. So the back half of nice. the sixth round. So obviously the, uh, the majority of people, have also done their research or, you know, somebody in uh, all the uh, various, at least one person in all the various mocks has. And 
Yeah, his ADP is uh, back half of the sixth round. Our consensus is 60th overall. ESPN has him all the way down at 95. Uh, tell me why you like Brandon Cooks this year. Brandon Cooks going into his seventh season already. I feel like he just came into the NFL. Maybe that makes me old. I don't know. Maybe not. This is fourth team already, which is crazy. He's already been traded three times. New Orleans to the Patriots. He was there for a year. Patriots to the Rams. He's been there for a couple of years, and now he's on Houston. And last year was the first time that he did not have a thousand yards since his rookie season, which is crazy. So he's been remarkably consistent. I don't know if this is just me, but I've always felt like he misses a lot of games because of concussions. Like I feel like everybody knows of his concussion history, but his games missed don't really bear that out, which was surprising to me when I was actually doing some research on him. So he's other had than his five, rookie, yeah, to that end, I'm, I'm, I'll, I can add the specifics there. He's had five known con- concussions. He's only missed two games in the last five years. He's, yeah. He's only played less than 14 games once in his six year career and he played 10 that year which is not nearly the injury risk that fuller is like not close no it's not even close so i i I mean honestly i thought it was a misprint when he played in all 16 games four straight years and missed two games last year like i i just thought that he wasn't around and i don't i don't know how that was happening i I don't know if my brain broke but I, i like i've never had brandon cooks on any of my teams which is kind of hard to do when you have four different teams. And so he's like one of those guys that I've just never really had to pay attention to because he's never been on my team and I face him every once in a while and he does fine, but he's never like killed me. So I've never really thought of him as being a guy that like should be really good. But I, I and I think, I think I mentioned this in our wide receiver pod, but you know, he's a top 15 wide receiver for the last five years. So And he's got all these thousand yard seasons. And so there's no reason why he should be going as late as he is in the drafts. His his ADP is better than that, but um, than where ESPN has him. But it's almost like they just kind of forgot about how good he is. So, yeah, they're really penalizing him for last year. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't get it. It was one year and the, the Rams offense stunk last year and there, there was just something wrong with it. I don't know what happened. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of throwing it out, honestly. So uh, last year, Houston threw the ball 58 percent of the time, which was his 22nd lowest in football. Um, but in the last three years, that percentage was 62 percent, which was the 11th highest. So I don't know wow. what was going on last year, but there there's some. They, they turn around and just handed the ball to Carlos Hyde all the time, and he's not there anymore. I, I think they're going to oh, open David it up Johnson a little is. bit. Yeah, well, I think they're going to open it up a little bit more because Carlos Hyde wasn't really the, cat, the um, pass catching Stone back. Stone hands. I, I think David Johnson is a pass, pass catching back. He's proven it, and Duke Johnson's still there. So Brandon Cooks, when he's been the best receiver on his own team, So it hasn't been the last two years with the Rams because they have Cooper Cup and they have Robert Woods. In 2015, which was the second year in the league, he had 129 targets, 84 catches, 1,100 yards, and nine touchdowns. That's pretty good. And then in 2016, the Saints drafted Michael Thomas. And he was still like, Brandon Cooks was still really good, but he was kind of the second option there. Um, Even when, so, I mean, Michael Thomas's first year outdid, um, Brandon Cooks in basically every statistical category, and then they traded him. But he he was still really good that year. 78 catches, 1,173 yards, and eight touchdowns. 2017, he got traded to New England. Gronk was really the the number one guy there. Edelman tore his ACL. And then he's been with the Rams since. And so he just hasn't really, he's never been, or he has been the number one guy only one year. And he did really well. And, and this year, I think he's the clear cut number one in Houston because I don't trust Will Fuller to stay healthy. I don't think Will Fuller trusts himself, some, trusts himself to stay healthy. Yeah. So, I mean, somebody has to replace um, DeAndre Hopkins. He had 150 targets last year, 104 catches. So it might as well be Brandon Cooks. Um, and then one last point that I have on him, uh, his playoff schedule uh, is interesting it started the week 14s at chicago which i don't like 
at all. No, um, no, no. But I mean, he's going to be your wide receiver like four. Maybe, maybe. Or I mean, three maybe at least. If you're getting him in the back half of the sixth, like you have two other receivers in the first five rounds. Oh, for sure. No, I, I, I agree. So with he's you. your third guy. So it's not like you're pressured to use him, right? Correct. So hopefully you don't have to use him week um, week fourteen, but week fifteen's at Indy, which which I'm cool Yum. with inside. Um, and then uh, week sixteen is home against the Bengals, Ooh, which boy. is also inside. Everybody loves playing in a dome. So there's your there's your guy. So that's that's me on Brandon Cooks. I'm I'm high on him. Um, I, I mean, he's still got a really good quarterback in Deshaun Watson. And I, I just think he's going to be really good. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because a lot of the experts are don't know what to do with Cooks and Fuller. Uh, to give you an idea, 59% of experts are recommending drafting Fuller over Brandon Cooks at this moment. And their ECR or expert consensus ranking per Fantasy Pros is back to back at 35 Cooks and 36 Fuller. So... That's just nobody knows, you know, they don't even know what to recommend. <laughs> like Everybody's neck and neck yeah. picking one versus the other. Um, I'm I'm with you on the Cooks bandwagon myself, because like what you said, I mean, the, everybody thinks that both of these guys have extreme health concerns, but Cooks isn't out here missing a ton of games. You know, it's Will Fuller right. that averages ten and a half games a season like that is absolutely ridiculous to try and pencil in as a wide receiver one. Um, For the record, I would have taken Cooks, the under on that too. I, I would have guessed that he played less games than 10 and a half a game or 10 and a half a year. Yep. Last year, Cooks was 30th in consistency. Fuller was 37th. In 2018, Cooks was 14th and Fuller was 22nd. And these are per uh, fantasy football today. Um, consistency ratings. And then... Um, Cooks had one bad season. Uh, he had a bad season last year, but he only had 72 targets. Like any receivers going to struggle to have a great year. If they're only getting the ball thrown to him 72 times, like that offense changed from 11 personnel to 12 and cooks was the odd man out and they shipped him off. And now he's going to try and replace the 150 vacated targets by DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I, I think it's Cooks, personally. Um, Fuller scored double-digit points in only two of 11 games last year, and he only averaged Yikes. six and a half targets. He only averaged six and a half targets a game, which was 35th in the league. Like, I if he's such the guy and DeAndre just is gone and now it's Wolf Fuller show. Like I, I don't, I think he would have commanded a larger share than what DeAndre allowed him to command. Um, Fuller. I'm you know, also a guy when it comes to fa to fantasy where it's like, if you've done it before and proven that you're really good, that I'm, I'm good with rolling with you. Yeah. Because because yeah. Cook, Cooks has already proven that he's done it. And Will Fuller has exploded a couple weeks, and he ends up on everybody's roster, and they start him the next week, and then he gets zero. Speaking of that, Will Fuller had four single point games leading up to his Week Five explosion last year for almost fifty points, which was just incredible. But like nobody <laughs> started him. It was, it was something I've seen. Such a low percentage of leagues actually even had him uh, in you know on the starting roster. So he erupts for almost fifty points, and then what does he do? He turns around and lays two single point games back to back after exploding for almost fifty. And he only had two double digit games. Also, like why? Why is everybody on the Will Fuller bandwagon? Like the health concerns, the lack of targets in this offense. I it just I'm I don't know why people are steering clear of Cooks. I mean, I guess, you know, five concussions is a lot. Like it is. It's a lot. Uh, and who knows what the implications of a sixth would be. I think everybody would understand if he retired if he is concussed again. Um and so I, I do understand that, but I feel like that's baked into his value, but I feel like over baking it and ranking him 95th overall is just way criminally too low for the output 
Cooks will have while on the field. And he's shown that even if he is concussed, he's only missed two games because of it. Like as such an over penalty for, for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, again, I would rather have somebody that's proven that they, that they've done it before in these middle to late rounds, because I feel like there's so many people that just take people based on potential all the time. And they like Devonte Parker, as an example, the first four years before he finally exploded. Yeah. Right. And I would rather, I, I, right. I would, I would rather have people be taking the Devonte Parkers of the world and when he finally explodes, it's like, oh, well, like, good, good for you. And I'd rather try to get somebody that's proven they can do it. And like James White, as an example, where he, he's he got that he's going to have a floor. He's going to be able to be a bi week replacement at minimum that you could plug him in and, and be comfortable with playing him. And he's going to get you something versus you, you don't know what somebody like if like a Will Fuller who's been taken in the 12th or 13th round in the last couple of years is ever going to give you. Yeah. Or even higher than that. I think he was, he was pretty, pretty early last year too. Yeah, he was and because he, he's had a couple seasons where he was like, you know, erupting for these huge games out of nowhere. Yeah. And then yeah. everybody wants him on their team. And then two games later, he blows out a hammy and he's gone for the rest of the year. Like he's only averaging just over 10 games a season. So it's just, it's so frustrating to be a Will Fuller owner. Um, I think, and I, I think that's going to continue, honestly. Um, let's stay at the position and move on to our next sleeper steal value. Jamison Crowder. Um, Alex and I have him consensus 64th overall. Uh, ESPN has him all the way down at 94. His, his current ADP is insulting, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, he is currently going at 134th overall or the beginning of the 12th round. So he is free, basically. Like, he's not free because you still have to draft him in the 12th. And most people have 15 round drafts. And so, like, 13 of the 15 are positional players. So, before you pick your kicker in defense. So, I mean, the second to the last round of when most people are drafting their actual, like, players is basically free. Um, I, yeah, Jamison Crowder excites me and I've luckily had him for the, you know, on and off for the last couple of years. Um, after, uh, Sam Darnold came back from mono last season, Crowder was targeted 94 times, which was the 14th most among all wide receivers from weeks. Uh, what five through 17, like, that's 14th and you can get the 14th most targets in the 12th round. Yeah. And for, so af after week nine, his targets were nine, six, eight, four, nine, seven, 11, eight, and 10. He was good. Wow. He was getting targeted all the time. Yeah. A and in games, Darnold played, he averaged uh, just over eight targets a game. How many targets do you think DJ Chark averaged per game? I'll say under that. He averaged DJ Chark averaged under eight targets a game. Uh, Amari averaged seven and a half targets a game. And Jamison Crowder scored six touchdowns with Darnold. So the, the end zone reliability is there. Um, with Jamison Crowder as well. I think he could definitely finish as a wide receiver too, given a full season with Darnold. So Alex, what do you think about uh, Jamison? Yeah, I agree. Um, so the Jets were right in the middle of the NFL, uh, 15th in percentage of passing plays. Um, they ran just about 60% of their um, plays were passes. Just as a friendly reminder, I mean, Jamison Crowder was the 31st ranked wide receiver last year in, in half PPR leagues. Um, he had the 16th most catches in football. He had the 15th most targets. So something just doesn't jive there. What, like why, you know, 31st, but 15th in targets, 16th in catches. Now, his his average depth for part for target is like one of the lowest in the leagues. And that's OK. But. 
like part of the reason why he ended up so low was because I mean, those three games when when Sam Darnold didn't play was Luke Falk and Trevor Simeon throwing him the ball. <laughs> and I mean, in those games, talk about Blau Crowder balls. had. Yeah, I mean, he had four catches for 40 yards the first week. And you're like, OK, like maybe he's salvageable at least a little bit. And then the two weeks after that, two catches for 25 and two catches for 10. And so he salvaged that into still being the 30 face, 31st ranked wide receiver. So a solid wide receiver three, a, an OK flex player like he was fine. He was I mean, I I was playing him in one of my leagues last year because he, he was fine. So to your point, game started by Sam Darnold. He averaged 11.3 points per week, um, and that's in a, a half PPR league. Extrapolate that over all 16. Uh, and that would have been good enough for wide receiver 21 last year. So like. He'll be fine as long as Darnold stays healthy, and I have no reason to not think he will. Um, downsides, uh, Adam Gase is his coach, so that kind of sucks. Um, bummer. Um, he, he did have six <laughs> touchdowns his last nine games, so he finished the year strong. And just from like a competition of target standpoint, they have Brashad Perriman. They drafted Denzel Mims out of Baylor. Um, I'm not banking on any rookies being productive at all this year because... I'm not scared of Perriman either. No, yeah, I mean, forever an underachiever as as a Raven and had what two weeks uh, with the Bucks at the end of last year. Once everybody got hurt, yeah, yep. So, I mean, it, I, I think there's just a lot of value here. There's no reason why he should be getting drafted as late as he is. He's still the Jets' number one wide receiver, and if you can get a Jets, or who cares if it's even the Jets, if you can get a number one wide receiver on any team that late, that is a potential like an easy criminal value yeah it's just it doesn't make any sense so i yeah. mean and, and the nfl is becoming more and more dependent on kind of those slot players so like if he can he's always been good with you know him and kirk cousins had a good rapport and him and Star sam darnell were fine last year he's, so i i think i think the value's there um real quick on his playoff schedule it's at Seattle, which is actually a fine matchup at L.A. Rams and home against the Browns. So those are those are pretty, pretty the Rams okay. I would want to avoid Jalen Ramsey, but yeah, but he doesn't play the slot, though. True, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, right. But right. So if Jalen Ramsey is lined up against them, you're doing you shadowing cut, or whatever, then. But yeah, yeah you, you, right. You just got to be aware of what kind of defense they've been running. We don't know what it's going to look like with Wade Phillips gone from L.A. So, yeah, well, like just kind of pay attention. But I mean, th that's otherwise a fine playoff schedule. Um, they should be playing from behind in some of those games. So the more passes, more targets and. Jamison, I call him Jamison Money Crowder, uh, only because there's a CPA. So I'm a public accountant for those of you who are listening that don't know that. And there's a CPA firm in Alabama called Jamison Money Farmer. Um, and so I just call Jamison Money Crowder. Uh, I don't know. It's sorry. There you public go. accounting joke. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> Jamison Crowder, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with him, um, especially he went in the 10th round of our mock. I believe I took him. But if he's not going until the 13th and he's sitting there in the 11th, like it's OK. He's a number one wide receiver um, on that team. You should be taking him. McCole Hardman went before him in our draft like that was that's just not that should not be a thing. Like he's the he's at best no, like the the third target in that offense um, on a, on a good day like and to get the number one target even in a you know a less desirable offense we'll call it maybe I mean, four I mean maybe fourth because you got Watkins yeah you exactly got Kelsey, I wasn't and you got, I wasn't counting yeah. Watkins right but uh, I mean Crowder does get to play the Dolphins twice. So there's that. That's like, actually that's actually not good because they have like the two highest paid cornerbacks in football and their their defense is gonna be really good, honestly. This year. We'll see. Last year they were yep. not. But no, they weren't, but they I mark it down. They the Dolphins are gonna have a top ten defense this year in fantasy. Top ten? Yeah. I'll take the under top on 10. that. All right, I'll I'll throw that on our bets that we have going. Yeah, top ten, top ten fantasy defense, wow. Miami Dolphins this year. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Put that on the board for sure. Um, that's right. Our, our, our first one is you having Keyshawn Vaughn versus uh, at Clyde fine. Edwards Hilaire. It's fine. Yeah, you lost that one uh, because we're really high on on Mr. Ronald Jones. So let's. Yeah, nice segue. We are professionals. Hashtag we are professionals. <laughs> Oh. All right. Our next guy that we like is a mid to late round kind of value draft, you know, sleeper guy, steel, if you will. Sacco steel is Ronald Jones. Um, our consensus is 69th overall. I nice. have him. Well, I, I had him uh, lower. I, I believe I raised him. Um, but 69th overall, ESPN actually has him at 69. Uh, there's no way that this 69 for us is accurate anymore. I did raise him today. His also AD, nice. His ADP is currently 80th, which is the middle of the seventh round. Tell me why you like Ronald Jones. I feel like people think that he's bad at football and he's not bad at football. I don't. I don't get it. Um, honestly, I just, I think he's really good at football. Like when you watch him play, he's good. So uh, it was him and Ronald Jones last year. It was Ronald and, Jones and Peyton Barber. Oh, sorry. Peyton Barber. I saw Ronald Jones. I freaked out mental block. So it, it was him and Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber sucked. He just, he yeah, was Peyton Barber was not football. good. So, man, I, I can't even believe this, honestly, when I looked. So, Peyton Barber had 18 less carries than Ronald Jones did last year, and he had 254 less yards. Like, that and <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense. They kept turning around the, and giving the ball to Peyton Barber, and Ronald no, Jones No, but I'm worried about, wouldn't you be worried about that, them doing that with Keyshawn Vaughn, though, too? No, I'm I'm fine if they do the same thing that that if he got the exact same split, I think that he will prove to be better than Keyshawn Vaughn. So we're, we're highlighting a running back here um, where the Tampa Bay was in the bottom third in the league in rushing percentage. Uh, they ran the ball just under 38 percent of their plays, which is 26 in football, which is is not not great. But I no. think that could change with Tom Brady because he's a little more fragile than than Jameis was. So last year was the first year that Ronald Jones actually received any amount of playing time. It was his third year in the league, and he's going to be 23 this season. Yum. So he came in really young. Yum. And he finally knows Bruce, Ar Bruce Arians' offense. So... It took took a while. Yep. But he's finally third year in. He's finally going to know it. And that offense is notoriously difficult to learn. So he averaged four point two yards a carry last year and they just wouldn't give him the damn ball. He had the same amount of touchdowns as Peyton Barber did. They both had six. Now, if you could, you know, take a couple more of those. Yeah. All of a sudden you're, you're getting a little getting a little taste, right? When Ronald Jones had 10 or more carries last year, um, he averaged 12.1 points per week in a PPR league, extrapolated over 16 games that would have put him at running back 16 last year. So give me some of that. And it should also be noted that he had 10 or more carries in 11 games. So it's it's. Not that much more of a leap to say that he's going to have more carries this year, especially because of, again, another rookie running back that's potentially competing against him. And I don't I don't trust a rookie running back to come in and know a, a somewhat complex pass scheme with the greatest of all time quarterback there where you can't miss a block. Yeah. So, so also keep in mind, Keyshawn Vaughn that they just drafted. He's older than Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones is three months younger than Keyshawn Vaughn. And he's huh. been in the, and this will be his third year in the league. Again, that's crazy. Uh, of something, a couple other things to note. He was only on the, the field for 37% of snaps last year. He was on the field for 47% of design running plays. I would expect both of those numbers to increase somewhat substantially this year, actually. 
Uh, Ronald Jones was the 26th ranked running back last year. He had 31 catches for 300 yards, so he's going to be used as a receiver. It's not like Keyshawn Vaughn's going to come in and just totally replace him because Ronald Jones still has hands. He's proven that he can catch the ball. I kind of look at him more as like a more talented Sony Michelle who can like, you know, the Patriots always when Sony Michelle was in the game, they were going to run the ball, but they were never able to run like screen passes or really anything like that. But with Ronald Jones, he should be able to. Also, think about how many catches James White has had uh, the last five years since he. Oh, here so we we're, go. So we're we're gonna leave out uh, his rookie year where he didn't really play, but after that, his catches were 40, 60, 56, 87, and seventy-two. So Brady's going to check the ball down a lot. He always has, and so that's going to be to either Ronald Jones or Keyshawn Vaughn. Last point. He was benched last year after after missing a block, and um, Arian said, and this is a direct quote, he works his ass off, and he's going to get better at it, but we need him running the ball. But you can't run the ball if you can't protect the quarterback. I'm fairly confident that this offseason, that Ronald Jones uh, figured out how to pass block and understand pass protections. Yeah, I, think I mean, he that should have been his I, goal anyway. Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I think he has RB1 upside, honestly. Um, wow! And I, uh, yeah, I, I'm that high. I, I really like Ronald Jones. I, I have him rated as a back-end RB2 currently, um, but I, I, I think he can explode in that offense, honestly. Um, play, playoff schedule, um, home against the Vikings, at Atlanta, at Detroit. Um, there's really nothing that really scares me there. Um, so... Yeah, I, I think I think Ronald Jones can win people leagues this year. Wow. Well, I, I'm excited for our draft and to take him right in front of you then. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great zero RB target. Like if you go zero RB and you go wide receiver, wide receiver and like throw in that tight end or Lamar or Mahomes or somebody at the beginning, if you go zero wide or zero RB, I think you got to be looking for Ronald Jones in the mid rounds. Um, and he gets no credit for the fact that he went over a thousand total yards from scrimmage last year. Like yeah. he, gets n- he gets no credit for that at all. Like nobody, nobody's up here talking about how good Ronald Jones was. Um, he had 40 targets and 31 catches while splitting time with Peyton Barber. Like I just, Come on, man. He's, I don't think he's going to be splitting time this season, especially not to, to start. Is there a world? This is, this is, this is all things, right? We're talking about like percentage outcomes. Like there is a world where Ronald Jones comes out completely flat on his face and Keyshawn Vaughn assumes the starting role. There is also a world where you have a two game preseason but you have the NFL PA saying they want a zero game preseason, which means no time for Keyshawn Vaughn to learn the offense. Well, I mean, potentially learn it, but certainly not practice it, especially not at game speed. So you figure Ronald Jones is probably starting out with a heavier workload. Like he could come out hot and assume that role and not let it go. Like people are propping up Keyshawn Vaughn because last season was like that split back, you know, kind of thing that everybody wanted to stay away from. Like his, his rushing attempts in order, like down the line were so frustrating for Ronald Jones owners, 13 attempts. The first game turns around, runs the ball four times in the second game. Then it was like, ridiculous. Oh. And then it's like, Oh crap. Now I got to stay away from Ronald Jones. So you don't start him in the third game. The third game, he had 14 attempts again. And then the, the, the fourth game, he has 19 and then he goes from 19 in the fourth game. So you're thinking, all right, back to back games, increase usage. Maybe that week two is a blip and then turn around week five, nine rushing attempts week six, four rushing attempts, then 11, 18, 11 again. You're like, Oh my God, Ronnie Jones is back. And then back down four, 12, six, 11, 11, 14, 11, like this. It was just, it was all of this. It was the Ronald Jones roller coaster last year. Now he was targeted though. I mean, in one game he had 18, he had eight targets in a single game. Like, 
oh man, if, if he could just be on the field more and hopefully he learns those freaking pass protections. Um, they did have a suspect offensive line, um, but the Bucks drafted Tristan Wirfs. Go Hawks. Go Hawks out of the University of Iowa. Uh, Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year, I will say. Uh, lineman slash tight end university. Um, and they hopefully also signed, he's better than Gabe, than Gabe Creamy was for the Bears out of Wisconsin. Man, that guy sucked. God, that was the worst letdown. Oh, my God. Ever. Sucked. <laughs> that was so bad. Nobody's even going to remember that name other than Bears fans. We just lost, like, <laughs> you know, like more than half of our listeners are like, who? Um, yeah, first round bust. Uh, and then they also signed offensive tackle Joe Haig from the Colts, which is just kind of like a more of a depth pick. Um, but still, you know, anything anything helps. Um, as long as they they go away from this split, and I really think Ronald Jones is going to have every opportunity to sort of seize that role, especially early. There's there is no way they're putting in a rookie in Keyshawn Vaughn on third down at the beginning of the season when he has not practiced anything live, let alone the pass protections when you have what 43 year old Tom Brady surviving off of like kale and like water chips. Like they're not going to let that guy protect Tom Brady. No. So, um, over the last four games, he averaged almost 12 attempts a game, six, more than 60 yards, uh, three and a half targets, two and a half catches for almost 23 receiving yards, which if you extrapolate it out over a 16 game season comes to just shy of a hundred, uh, 200 attempts, just shy of a thousand rushing yards, uh, four touchdowns, and then another 40 40 catches for 364 yards. And you know, that was with him sort of running more or taking over a little bit more of the split over the last four games. Granted, it's a smaller sample size. Again, I think he can really command more of a share of that offense. Um, but that would total out to 177 total fantasy points in half PPR scoring, which would have been running back 20 on the season. Like, He's shown that he can produce at at least RB2 values. And assuming that, you know, we obviously are going to have this shortened opening to the season, um, his usage, I, I mean, Keyshawn Vaughn, I think, will be involved as the season progresses, but I think it's more of like a week eight on maybe he's given you some headaches here and there, but if Ronald Jones comes out hot, he's not letting go. Um, that, that 177 total points running back 20 is three more points than Marlon Mack had last year and only four points less than Josh Jacobs put up. Like he could, he could be so good. Could he be could so be. good. Yep. I, honestly, I, I would not be surprised if he ends up in RB one. If if he if he gets all of the offensive share of, of from the running back position, or if he's on the field for like, let's say like 65 percent of snaps. Yeah, I I I think he's deadly in that offense. Yeah, I, and and we've we, like we both watched the one clip of just him. Yeah, like of of some some rushing plays that's been circulating on on Twitter. The dude's just a beast, man. He can make anybody miss. He's quick. He's big. I, I have high hopes for Ronald Jones. And then, so that's our uh, Ronald Jones draft seal. To quickly update the consensus, I did check. We actually have him at consensus 53 overall. Uh, I have him at 60th. You all have him all the way up at 51. So I have him going at the end of the fifth. You have him going at the beginning of the fifth. So either way, solid fifth, what we think would be a great fifth round pick. Uh, ESPN has a 69 overall. His current ADP is 80th and he's currently going in the middle of the seventh, like tremendous value for what could be a great year for Ronald Jones. Um, and then our last draft steal value Sacco steal Jordan Howard. Uh, we have him at consensus 53 overall. Uh, or we did, I guess, before we we ranked uh, Ronald Jones there. So I believe he's actually consensus 52 with like the same score. But I just have Ronald or Jordan Howard higher than you have Ronald Jones 
ranked. So we gave the bump to to Jordan Howard. Uh, ESPN has Jordan Howard down at 83. His current ADP is 93rd overall, which wow. is the, the back half of the eighth round. You can get a starting running back in the back half of the eighth round. Um, he was exceptional last year. He was sixth in DVOA, which is again, that like defensive value above like the average replacement. So he was sixth ahead of, uh, guys like Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, and Nick Chubb in DVOA. Like the guy was fantastic when he was on the field and then he got hurt. And, you know, I know he's not the best receiving running back and that's like ultimately why the Bears let him go, but he was so talented. Um, in games that he played last season, last season, he averaged almost four and a half yards a carry. He was on pace for 930 uh, yards and 12 total touchdowns. Like the guy was a machine in the red zone. I think Brita is a clear third down back. He just doesn't have the size. Um, and so I think... You know, I think Howard's looking at probably at least like 15 touches a game or t- 10 to 15 if you're trying to be more modest. Yes, there's offensive line issues and, you know, team offensive skill weapon issues. And that's why, you know, the the all Miami Dolphins players are generally ranked lower. Uh, I mean, it, it's why like, you know, any of Miami Dolphins receiver was free and drafts last year. And then, you know, Devonte Parker blew up and now he's not free this year. Uh, but the running back situation in Miami was a joke last year. And then they traded Kenyon Drake uh, to the Cardinals. And then it was like Patrick Laird up the middle for a yard. And so nobody thinks that they can even run. Um, there were offensive line issues though. <laughs> you love, I'm so like, I feel a little guilty if some, if somebody drafts Jordan Howard and he, and he falls flat on his face because of how bad this line is or was last year of 171 qualified NFL offensive linemen last season, all five of the dolphin starters finished 146th or worse. (laughs) Wow. Out of 171. And that's according to ESPN stats and infos, pass block win rate, like, (sighs) wow. Uh, Um, they tried to address that this off season. They drafted guards. <laughs> they drafted guards, Robert hunt out of Louisiana Lafayette and Solomon Kinley out of Georgia in the second and fourth rounds respectively. So again, trying to bolster or fix the issue. At least they understood it was an issue. Um, that's not like the Packers, you know, having issues at skull positions and then going out and drafting a quarterback and a backup running back. <laughs> yeah. Suck season. it. Packer fans <laughs> suck it hard. Pack miss in April, baby. Um, and then they also acquired center Ted Karras from the Patriots and Eric Flowers um, from the artist formerly known as the Washington Redskins because they will no longer be. So I'm just saying like they're out here adding guys trying to fix what the issues are. Um, the offensive line was the biggest weakness. I mean, they traded Laramie Tunsil away. Um but now they're doing everything that they can to try and remedy the situation. You have two attack of Iloa. You have, you know, I think at least a couple skilled receivers in Preston Williams and Devontae Parker. I think that Jordan Howard, like he's going to be the guy in, in the, like the red zone, unless breed is doing some crazy, like motion out of the backfield type stuff. And I think he's the, for sure goal line and short yardage back. So I feel like he's, he's the, He's like the the flex the guy that you can get like for flex value and like flex draft position or later that could easily end up as a running back too. And that's exactly who you want in those positions. I I feel like he's always been like a good to great running back when he's healthy, and he's still only twenty six, and it feels like he's been in the league for seven years. You know, this is this is only year number five for him. He's on his yeah. third team. He's kind of similar to Brandon Cooks, at least a little bit in in that where he's just been around and he's been good, but just kind of flying under the radar. I think like he there's only two players that have more two running backs that have more yards since he came into the NFL. And any guesses? T- 
two running backs that have more yards? Yeah, more rushing yards since 2016. Oh, uh, geez. Zeke? That's one. Is it CMC? No, it's Todd Gurley. Oh, from that. Okay. From the one so, year. So, yeah. So, from 2016, there's a, those are the two players that have more rushing yards than him. So, like, he's a really good running back. He might not have the hands, but, I mean, the Eagles were throwing him flare passes last year, and he was handling them until he got hurt. Yeah, he wasn't I, useless. I, no, right. Absolutely not. Um, potential downside of drafting Jordan Howard. Miami ran the ball the second least amount of times last year, 34% Down in um, every game. Of, of their plays. Um, do, would you like to guess who the Dolphins' leading rusher was last year? In attempts or yards? Uh, yards. It was I'm Ryan Fid- it was Ryan Fitzpatrick. He, Are he you led kidding them in, me? Yeah, he led them in rushing yards last year. See, I was going to say, like, I actually, like, I know it wasn't Drake because they traded him before the deadline. Right. And then I remember watching, like, Dolphins games and because I had Devontae Parker in a couple leagues and seeing and just being completely unimpressed with everybody else that they had left. So I'm like... <laughs> I don't know. And then it's whole, I thought it was going to be like a receiver or something. A well, couple right. hundred so yard like, runs. Let, let me read. But no, it's the down, quarterback. Yeah. Let me read down a list of who was running the ball for them. Mark Walton. Kenyon Drake got traded. Patrick Laird. Kalen Bollage, who's one of the worst running backs in football. Kalen uh, Bollagio. Yeah. Miles Gaskin. Uh, is he a, yeah. Miles, I don't know who that is. Miles. Yeah. And then uh, one of my cousin Eric's favorite football players, Samaj P. Ryan, was also Ooh. on their team and, and running the ball. So, like, there was nobody there. So, with the with the exception of Kenyon Drake, who basically they were trying to keep healthy before they traded him, those are a bunch of nobodies. So, Matt Breida, Jordan Howard, they're not nobodies. Depending on who the quarterback is, I think you're going to see them run the ball more, especially because of that top 10 fantasy defense that the Miami Dolphins are going to have this year. So So you're you're going to have more drag them out, low scoring games, especially in that division featuring the Patriots, the Bills and the Jets defense. Like those are three really tough defenses that I could actually see downgrading Howard a little bit because of them. The Jets were the number one defense in yards allowed per attempt against the run. So, like, they they were number one. Bills were number 19. The Patriots were 16. Now, if you look at actual yards allowed, the Jets were number two in rushing yards allowed. The Patriots were sixth, and the Bills were 10th. So, you're really really looking at three top 10 rushing defenses in that division, and he's got six games against them. So, that's, that's not... That's not so great, right? Um, no. So his biggest downside, not being a pass catcher, um, I think that significantly does limit his upside. So he's going to need to score touchdowns to be an effective flex player. But I, I think he will score, you know, seven to ten touchdowns. Honestly, that's that's my guess as to where he ends up this year. Um, his playoff schedule uh, is home against the Chiefs, which is fine. Everybody ran the ball in the Chiefs last year to a certain yep. extent. Um, home against the Patriots, which initially you think is a bad matchup, but the Patriots always suck when they play in Miami. They, they're true. always te- they're always Pump terrible. in that crowd noise, baby. And then they're in Las Vegas uh, for the championship round against the Raiders. So I I, I do think there is playoff value there um, if you can make warm it that game, far into the warm season. Game dome, like yeah. Good. Like you're, you're probably going to have pretty good weather for all three of those games. You could start somebody worse at flex. No doubt about it. So I, I think Jordan Howard's going to be good um, to, regardless of who that quarterback is, but especially if two is their quarterback and they're trying to run more of a ball control offense, they're just going to turn around and give the ball to Jordan Howard an improved offensive line that you touched on. I think he's a, a good middle round player that um, we both like quite a bit. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I think that that does it for our Sacco steals or Sacco draft steals, draft values. Uh, I do want to talk about a little bit of newsy stuff. Um, congr- shout out to, uh, well, did you hear the big news? Maybe Tom Bergeron and Aaron Andrews aren't coming back to dancing with the stars. It's a travesty. Oh, 
Really? That's... <laughs> I'm I'm done. I, I'm honestly I don't think I can do this. That's that's <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Eric Henry, four years, fifty million, twenty twenty five and a half guaranteed. We have lost Woody Page. We have lost Woody Page. Oh my Dancing god. Dancing with the stars <laughs> is the news this week. I'm trying Dancing to appeal to a wider <laughs> audience. Dancing with the, fr- <laughs> are, oh, maybe we should talk about The Bachelor again, actually. Dancing the, with the Sackos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, please go to our website, www.thefantasyfootballsackos.com for all of our rankings, our top 125, our draft values compared to the ESPN rankings to see who we're high on, who we're lower on than where they're ranked uh, in ESPN top 300. Um, we only ranked 125, though. So again, disclaimer. Um, we are, follow us everywhere at the FF Sackos, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. The TikTok is hot lately. You can listen to us on all podcast platforms and uh, as always, please listen, like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Tell us who your favorites mid round, mid to late round targets are. Tell us what you think of our targets that we put out in this pod. Be well, be safe. Thank you. I can't believe we ended with dancing with the stars news. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's unbelievable. <laughs> What are we doing here? It's a foot. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle pod. Good night. Oh my God.